kick things off, let's get straight into our first audio example. This is a Universal Audio Luna project. It's actually the first time I ever used the EQ200. It's on the master bus, it's sweetening the entire mix. I'm going to show it you bypassed and active, and then I'll explain exactly what's going on and we'll look at the interface and operation of the plugin. So what sort of settings were being used there? Well, the truth is not many and they weren't that intense, but that really is something to keep in mind when using the EQ200 and a mantra to live by, a little goes a long way here. For instance, we were only looking at around 1.4 dB on both the high end and high mid there and around about 1 dB on the low frequency. So really a subtle smiley curve, just sweetening the mix. On top of that, we had a touch of high pass at about 25 or 30 hertz. And of course, we were engaging some of the plugin only Brainworks features, such as the TMT, the Mono Maker, and Stereo Width. We'll look at all of these in the course of the video. So, before we get into the operation and the interface of this plugin, what exactly is it? Well, at its heart, it's a fully parametric five band EQ. Each band can be engaged and disengaged here. And of course, each band has a fully sweepable Q and frequency control. We've also got shelving filters on the low and high bands. We've also got two filters here, a high pass and a low pass. They're actually much more intense than you would expect. Let's take a quick listen to the high pass, for example. So a massive amount of control there, and it's really, really precise. One thing to note here is we've got these variable gain controls underneath each gain knob. Now you can see that I've got them all depressed in the 7 dB mode. I find this perfect for mastering. It means that you're using a much smaller gain range. If we click it into 15 dB, you can see that we can attenuate or add 15 dB of gain. This is most likely more suited to tracking rather than working on your master bus. Another really nice touch is the gain scale. We see this in other Brainworks EQs such as the BX Digital version 3, and it gives you the ability to make your EQ setting more or less intense, but keep your relative controls intact. So let's take a look at that in action. So now we've covered the key features of the main EQ panel, let's focus on the one new rack that sits below it. This houses pretty much all the Brainworks plugin only features. And if you're familiar with Brainworks plugins in general, you will be familiar with this set of controls. So as usual, we see metering here that will allow you to see your input and output levels really clearly. You can also adjust them with the in and output gain controls. And of course, we have the now patented tolerance modeling technology section. This enables you to introduce the non-linearities you're going to see in the hardware. Not only does it allow you to pick varying models of the EQ, but it also introduces differences in the left and right sides and introduce that coveted 3D width that's often associated with hardware. This, of course, can be turned off if you prefer to have exactly the same model in the left and right sides. In the center, we've got the now famous mono maker, allowing you to sum everything below a certain frequency to mono. And to the right, we've got a stereo width control, which essentially raises the level of the side channel and makes the whole mix sound wider. Next up, we've got a mid side button. This completely changes the topology of the EQ, switching it from a standard stereo model to a mid side processor. The controls on the left of the EQ will become the mid channel and the controls on the right will become the side channel. The parameter link is useful here. You probably want this turned off in mid side, I find, 
and switched on for stereo, allowing you to control both the left and the right sides with one set of controls. The total harmonic distortion in the unit can be switched on or off and changed to taste, allowing you to introduce more or less analog mojo. So now we're familiar with the controls and operation of the EQ200, let's tie things up with another audio example. This time we're in Logic in a classic rock project, and I've got a number of EQ200s loaded. These two smaller EQs at the top here are actually assigned to the kick and snare, and they're mono instances of the plugin. The mono version of the plugin is really great for mixing when you're in larger projects and you've got a number of mono channels. The operation of the plugin is pretty much exactly the same, you're just going to see five bands instead of ten. In this case, we're adding thump and high end to the kick and some extra mids for body on the snare. On top of this, we've also got another instance of the plugin in mid side mode across the entire drum bus. This is the one I really want to focus on because when we're in mid side mode, we can use the stereo width control to either increase or decrease the level of the side channel. In this case, that means we're able to change the room sound and overheads of the entire drum mix. Let's take a listen to that in action. We can also change the EQ of the side channel and the mono channel independently. So that's great. I think these three EQs are working well together and they're injecting all the life we need into the drum bus. On top of this, I've got another instance of EQ200 across the master bus doing its usual thing of making everything sound much better. I'm adding quite a lot of high end and high mids here, and also quite a lot of low frequency at around 80 hertz. Things were a little dull before we added the EQ. Let's take a listen to the whole mix, both active and bypassed. So hopefully this video has demonstrated what a truly flexible and powerful processor the EQ200 really is. If you want to try it out for yourself in your own projects, visit the Plugin Alliance website where you can get more information and a fully functional 14-day trial. As ever, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. <laughs>